Joining us now is Congressman Brendan Boyle. He's a Democrat from Pennsylvania who is on the House Committee of Oversight and Government Reform. Good morning, Congressman. Hey, good morning. Good to be with you. You supported Nancy Pelosi's opponent, Tim Ryan. Uh, why do you think that he didn't get more votes? Yeah, well, that, that's actually not uh, not exactly not exactly correct. But um, I would say that uh, did you? I'm sorry, but I'll let you correct it. Did you? Who did you yeah. support? I, I voted for Pelosi. I, oh. I think that the um, the larger issue was some uh, reforms that need to take place in our caucus to make it more open and allow for uh, more of uh, an opportunity for some of us who are a little bit on the younger side uh, of the of the spectrum. Uh, to have a say in uh, the direction, and I think that we're moving our way toward that. But yeah. I also think that, uh, and I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, coming out of our first post-election caucus, I think it would be a mistake to conflate or confuse any one leadership election with something that's a much broader problem going back about eight to ten years in our party. And, what, and that is the tremendous yeah. challenge and decline that we've had among blue-collar voters and blue-collar Americans. Right, and that was Tim Ryan's message to yes. America and to all of you. And I'm sorry for that erroneous note. I have a large, bolded portion of my research packet here that says that you supported Tim Ryan. I'll be firing someone right after this. Um, no, but please don't, wait. I, <laughs> I, I was elected to create jobs. Please don't fire anyone okay. over... Uh, fair, uh, fair enough. Okay, but, but that was his message. I mean, yeah, so I, why do you believe that Nancy Pelosi who, as he pointed out, has lost seats for Democrats on her watch. Why do you think that she is the voice of working class voters moving forward? I, I think that it would be a mistake to uh, either look to one person to totally blame or look at one person as the complete solution. It's much more broad than that. For example, a, a younger colleague and I, Mark Vesey, uh, we just formed something called the Blue Collar Caucus as a way to try to orient our party toward discussing and working on specifically the economic anxiety issues of working class Americans, the sort of family that, that I come from and uh, neighborhood that I still live in today. The fact is, and this is the case in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, but this country, uh, even though the unemployment rate, the stated unemployment rate is pretty good, we've had a 20 to 30 year period of complete stagnation among middle-class Americans. Yeah. And so the idea that, frankly, both parties need to do a better job of paying attention to the hard-pressed sure. working class yeah. in this country. But I mean, voters basically said in electing Donald Trump that they don't believe that your party will help them and has their back. I tend to think that in this election, they, uh, and I, look, I'm still amazed that Donald Trump was elected. I, I did not support him. Um, and uh, I'm very worried about some of the things he may bring about. However, Democrats should take note that he stole what had been our message on infrastructure, jobs, and also trade, making sure these trade deals are actually fair for American workers and look out for American yeah. workers first and Wall Street second. Uh uh, I think that's a message that our side needs to, to learn. Well, about that, that's interesting that you say that he stole your message. Let's zero in on infrastructure because that is what President Obama started with, where, you know, he said that there was going to be a stimulus bill and it was going to have all these shovel-ready projects and they were, you were going to work on infrastructure. Why is it that when Donald Trump said it, it resonated more and there wasn't the, the opposition and fight as there was when Barack Obama said it? Yeah, it is pretty remarkable as someone on the conservative side of the aisle that thought it was absolutely awful and terrible when, when President Obama eight years ago proposed an infrastructure bill. By the way, about half of that money ended up being for tax cuts and, and not infrastructure eight years ago. I wasn't here as a member, but uh, of, observing this. Um, today, we have somewhere between uh, one and one and a half trillion dollars worth of infrastructure needs that need to be met. Roads, yeah. bridges, transit, but yeah. also water, our electrical yeah. grid, and gas lines in my city of Philadelphia that date back to the 1800s. Right. So the fact that we have in Donald Trump, a Republican who's actually taking a more democratic position, and there are Democrats on my side of the aisle, including myself, who may disagree with him and vote against Trump on a number of issues, but we have said we are willing to be bipartisan and work with him 
to vote on infrastructure, okay. a real infrastructure bill that rebuilds America. And if he can bring along some of these conservative Republicans who were saying how awful it was when Obama was doing it, right. will now support it just because it's a Republican president, yeah. then that's their own hypocrisy. But I would rather have them ultimately voting for the right thing. Congressman, I want to ask you, because you're on the oversight um, committee, this letter that you took part in, uh, Elijah Cummings is leading it. He sent it to Congressman Jason Chaffetz. And basically, you all are asking the chairman of the Oversight Committee to look into potential conflicts of interest of Donald Trump's. Why do you think that Jason Chaffetz thus far has been reluctant to do that? Well, it's incredible. Uh, Chairman Jaffetz, who, who I happen to like personally, and the, the Republican majority on the committee, uh, kept investigating and reinvestigating Hillary Clinton and were already uh, gearing up for investigations, assuming she'd be president elect. But now, when Donald Trump has enormous conflicts, especially those that involve entanglements between his private businesses and foreign governments, suddenly you hear a lot of uh, quiet from, from the chairman and from those who are on the oversight committee. They need to do their job regardless of party. I'm deeply concerned that. One example, the GSA uh, bans any uh, person with the federal government from having a business stake in that lease on Pennsylvania Avenue for mm. the Trump Hotel. Yeah. Trump is going to be the ultimate federal employee. He's going to be president of the United States, and yet he's still going to be owner of a hotel that now foreign feel that they need to send their people to in order to stay. That, yeah. That's wrong. Uh, and this is a very serious issue. Uh, our Constitution, you know, back when we were a poor country at our founding, our founding fathers were very concerned about this. That's yeah. why that clause is in the Constitution. All right. Um, and it's still an issue today. Well, we will see what uh, Congressman Jason Chaffetz does with your letter and your plea to him to investigate some of this yeah. stuff. Congressman Boyle, thanks so much for being on.